Hey Simone, lovely to see you on, uh, well what's what's a fairly bleak afternoon in New Zealand, I don't know what, what it's like in Sydney but it's fairly grey here. Oh, it's beautiful, the sun is shining, the waves are lapping, you know. Uh, all, always beautiful in Sydney, especially when you live on an island as you do. <laughs> yes, that's true, um, it is uh, definitely a lucky thing to be here. Yeah. So we're we're looking forward to your to your presentation uh, coming up. So, any precursors you want to you want to give us? What what's the uh, you're looking at communication today? Yes, absolutely. Um, I... Something that we in IT are often accused of not being very good at. <laughs> no, that's true. I was actually just uh, thinking from listening to. Uh, Karen and April's talk in particular, that uh, if we're going to do the all change, if we're going to use these approaches, uh, if we're going to share the knowledge, then we need to have, know how to communicate that. It's definitely very much a human thing. Uh, yeah. For all the self-service and et cetera that we're wanting to design and have people use, uh, we still need to uh, think about that from a human communication perspective. Great, well I'm really looking forward to this, as you know, Communication is one of my big uh, things that I'm interested in, and uh, I'm really looking forward to hear what you've got to say. So Excellent. I will hand over to you, and uh, we look forward to seeing your slides and hearing your lovely voice. Oh, thank you so much. I'll just uh, switch over to my screen share now. Won't be a second. Okay, so you got that at your end? Yes, all yours, Simone. I will hide myself and mute myself now and leave it up to you. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to my presentation. Uh, we'd really love it if you stay connected throughout. Uh, remember to use your hashtags, hash TFT13, and if you're following HDAA1, uh, the hashtag NoITSM. Uh, we'd love for you to join in and uh, have any questions, etc., set up for the end of the session uh, so Kirsty and I can uh, pull apart this whole thing about communication. Uh, just a really brief agenda for you uh, so you know what we'll be covering. Just an understanding of what and why communication is. And specifically, I'm going to be covering the six step human communication process. That includes good vibrations, so your voice waves, uh, the E of emotion, uh, looking at white noise, filtering, and matching those communication styles that everyone seems to have a different way of being. So I'm absolutely thrilled to share with you the core ability to get yourself and others to generate and catch the right sound wave. It is a life skill as much as a business skill. And just as you ask, yes, unication is a real word. It's the act, instance, or process of uniting. From moment to moment, as you're dealing with your thoughts and communicating with another person, their perception is solidified. It's good to remember that people aren't difficult, they're just different. Within a few seconds of meeting someone, we form a distinct impression and decide that they're serious or aggressive, quiet, funny, introverted or even extroverted. And then we act as if those impressions are true. I'd like to ask you how accurate have your perceptions been of late? Understanding the human communication process increases your opportunity for successful interactions. It's a process that leads to unity within yourself, others, and what drives us. There are even communication technologies out there that use unication as their moniker, but it's still a very human business. So let's explore and learn to become a little more innovative in our two-way communication. Communication travels across vast distances in time and space and sends out ripples far and wide and not always with the results we expected. So is communication to you just random chaos or is it determined order? Is it a byproduct or just coincidence? In managing services, we need to be professional communicators. Our true role and product is the knowledge and information we provide and the manner in which we provide it. To manage services, we must be able to communicate clearly, 
concisely and deliver understanding of the services and the impacts on the customer and the business overall. But not without first being able to absorb and understand what they're telling us they need. If communicating with impact and influence was so easy, everyone would be an effective communicator. But there are thousands of years of proof and experience. Crap happens, but sometimes it's a mystery as to why. I mean, after all, aren't humans all wired the same way? Well, let's see. Communication is a creative and dynamic continuous process, not just a discrete exchange of information. Whether energy fades into nothing or becomes a rideable wave depends on numerous factors. There's a natural tension when you see a wave approach. So are you well positioned for the best and fastest place to drop into the wave? In other words, are you ready to surf? Think about it. You're at the beach and you're watching it happen. There's the perfect barreling surf where it's breaking so nicely and you're hanging to catch that wave. But when you're first learning to surf, you're going to ding and scratch your board. Those thin, narrow rockets the stars ride, they look exciting, but they're a disaster for surfers learning the initial techniques. To find the sweet spot, you need to increase your expertise for maximum balance, stability and manoeuvrability. But watch out, you can still wind up eating sand. Let's make sure we're all talking about the same thing. Communication is defined as the exchange or imparting of ideas and information, or a message to another party so it can be understood and acted upon. It's more than just speaking, writing, listening or reading. It's about the exchange of thoughts, messages and information. Now the process seems really simple. Let's face it, people just take turns speaking, interpreting and listening. It's a key component to effective service, to establish good relationships with our customers, team members, managers and any other part of the organisation. Therefore, it's important to exhibit excellent communication skills and build the rapport with customers and peers with each and every interaction. Now that takes practice. It's a delicate dance in this surfing the sound wave. So here are some crucial elements. In essence, the human nervous system is our information highway. It's a network responsible for controlling and coordinating all the functions of the body by transmitting messages or signals from the brain to the different regions of the body and vice versa. With the help of the nerves and neurons, they conduct those signals or impulses between the two components, that is, our central and peripheral nervous system. Now, just for the geeks that are listening today, let me translate that into human terms. Here's your server room, here's your WAN, and here's your LAN. The nexus of our world is connected in our head and contained there, the seat of all that we know as us. This is the place where our thoughts and emotions rule over and communicate to our body. It's the coming together of many energy points of our system and in true balance hopefully is resting peacefully on our neck. So to the process itself, let's have a look at step one. Now we express thoughts in many different ways. The most common is verbal communication. The step here is the creation of that idea or concept. The difficulty is that these ideas are quite nebulous and they're connected to our emotions and motivation to act. Now, during this step, you dig beneath your waterline of what's normally visible to others, where there's an ocean full of strange creatures, coral and tides, and they can take over your attention and pull you away from the formulation of your message. So your focus and intent becomes absolutely crucial at this point. I want you to remember that energy flows where attention goes. Your thoughts and feelings do control the flow. On to the second step then, encoding. This is the move you make after dropping into your intended position. And you need to get this right or your next maneuver is definitely in danger. As you look at the coloured bars in the internal dictionary here, I want you to see the shadows. 
These shadows are when you're unsure about a word, either in its context, meaning, or whether that's the right one to use. This is the bottom turn as you come off the face of the wave. There's a saying, speak your truth. The brain will align to how you're feeling, that is, whatever's going on in your nervous system, with the words that most closely match with what's in your dictionary. Think about what you truly want the person to understand and or do. What do you want to say? And how are you going to say it effectively? Choose the right words to best express your thought or idea. Remember, it's from your own frame of reference or point of view. So don't get caught up inside the wave. You need to be as objective as possible when you're encoding your message. Now, step three, transmission. Unfortunately, this is absolutely physical and you don't have a lot of control over this. The brain has chosen how to best say the message in words and sends the message to the vocal cords in the mouth to speak. Beware what we call the noogie moment. At this point, there's no cutback. There's no reversing the direction you're surfing in one smooth, fluid move. If you haven't got step two right, you are going to bomb out just as you hit the sweet spot. You'll know when there's misalignment with what you want to say and what comes out through your body's signals. Tight throat, gritted teeth, shallow breathing and hunched shoulders. Your body's moving into fight flight mode, so now we better paddle away or brace for impact. Now, we're halfway through the communication process and because step three is a sound emission and is a physical act of the body, let's understand a little more about the voice. As a professional communicator, one of the most important skills to have is a good speaking voice. You can infuse the words with magic. And more importantly, in the human brain, sound is processed before words. So let's look at the vibrations. Now this is looking at the throat from above. You have your voice box and that's a box-like structure and it's made up of cartilage, muscle and connective tissue. It contains the vocal folds and those muscles are covered in a membrane that are attached to the inner surface of the cartilage. And if you look at the top of the cartilage, you'll see they're like uh, little scissors at the front and the two cartilages at the back. Back cartilages, they are movable. They control that vocal cord position, like the scissor action. But what's even more important is understanding that sound is carried on air. So the lung, it's got to produce adequate airflow and air pressure so it can vibrate those vocal cords. That's what fuels the voice. There's a vibrating valve within the vocal folds that then chop up that airflow from the lungs into those audible pulses. And that's what gives you the sound source. Those muscles in the larynx, they adjust the length and tension. And that's what then fine tunes the pitch and tone. Those articulators are things like your tongue, your palate, your cheek, your lips. That's what filters the sound emanating and interacts with that airflow and it can strengthen or weaken the whole sound source. It doesn't take much to vibrate that air stream. Let's have a look at some of the vocal elements in how you use your voice. Inflection. That's the wave-like movement, the roll and wave of your pitch. And it tells your listener how interested you are in them and all the topic. Think about when you're at a party or something like that and you're getting a little bored. You start to find that your tone will start getting a little flat. To the next vocal element. There is power in volume control. Too loud and the sound waves crash against that of an angry person. Or they're going to drown out that of a nervous one. Use volume purely for emphasis on keywords in your message. And if you want to sound confident, then you need clarity. Think about when you're unsure or you don't like a topic. 
you start to tend to close off your mouth, you grit your teeth and causing a sound to be muffled or mumbled. That's the last thing that you want to happen. As soon as you start to sound like that, people will start to think, well, maybe they don't really know what they're talking about. And to one of my favourites, intensity. This is the added passion to your voice. It tells the other person your level of care and concern about them or the topic. Now, when there's no face-to-face -face contact, sound becomes even more important. Sound generates feeling and feeling generates image. Your customers see with the ears. So take a look at these images on the screen. No sound. But what are you already processing as an image inside your head as to what that sound is? Remember, the human brain processes the sound before the comprehension of language. So I need to ask you then, what image do you generate with your voice? Throughout different times of the day, we go through emotional ups and downs, and our nervous system responds to the brain signals once again. Think about where you are right now in this moment, look at the energy line first. Where is it? Is it high or low or somewhere in the middle on the bar? Then have a look at your emotional level. Is it towards the positive or is it towards the negative? If you're generating an image as you speak, is it happy, miserable, content, unhappy, delighted? When someone asks you how you are and you respond, fine. I want you to think about the reality of what you're feeling. What fine really stands for? Freaked out, insane, neurotic and emotional. So there's the sound of step three. Let's look at step four, receiving. It's time to turn yourself around and ride the wave that's coming at you. In this step, it's the physical receipt of the sound waves that carry the message. The sound waves hit the eardrum, transmitted into electrical impulses and sent to the brain for processing. Now in this stage, your tone of voice and style of speech, as you as the sender, plays a major role. It can facilitate or damage the transmission of the message. Again, it's a physical function of what's going on in the communication process. Now let's get to the decoding. The brain has taken that sound and it's entered into the dictionary, your comprehension of language. So it's taking those electrical impulses and combining it with what you think you may have heard. It's trying to match the words in your dictionary to those you thought you heard. And because of those sound shadows that were in step two, it's not always a perfect wave signal to the brain. In addition to that, let's talk about white noise. Many times communication can be nothing more to us than just that. So there's different types to think about. There's environmental, like standing too next to loudspeakers at a party or the noise from a construction site next to the office. Physiological impairment is easily understood, actual deafness or blindness, but remember that also interferes with the intention of decoding the message. Semantic noise, well, most of us that have learnt to speak, try to speak another language around, we know that, well, the same word can have completely different meanings depending on how they're used. All we have to do is think about our own slang. Syntactical noise, when we make mistakes in grammar, and that causes disruption, especially if there are abrupt changes in past or present tense and those types of things. Organisational noise is probably one we're very familiar with. Poorly constructed work communications. Very unclear, badly stated directions just cause plain confusion. Cultural noise is when we have stereotyped assumptions. Misunderstandings are quite common. And psychological noise? Well, let me revisit that waterline. There are certain attitudes that make communication difficult. But just remember, we're not always aware of what below someone's waterline at that moment of communication. There can be great anger, sadness, or other emotional impacts that cause them to lose focus. To step six, it is the final step in the process itself, and that's interpretation. 
This is when you put meaning behind the message received. And once again, dipping below the waterline into your experiences, attitudes, biases, your family cultures and social values, etc. Now that might be fine when you and the other person are from a similar background, but when you come from a different one and you're learning something new, there's a whole new language and culture to learn and interpret. The most underused communication element is checking in we heard what we thought we heard. Paraphrasing and giving the other person the opportunity to correct any misinterpretation. The best thing about this is you get to enter a new word, nuance or thought to tuck away into your own dictionary and experience cache that's below your own waterline. There has been a profound change in the last 50 years in the way we need to think. Consider all the abstract categories in today's world of science and technology. Clearly demonstrated by the topics and speakers at the recent Global Future 2045 conference in New York is a cognitive re revolution that's happened and we need to adapt to modernity. In this photo, Martine Rothblatt is discussing the different levels of consciousness and thank you to Chris Dancy for tweeting this out while he was at the conference. It looks such an interesting thing to be at. But until such time as our consciousness may be uploaded into living brain avatars, we still need to understand that our bio-nervous system is still very basic. The filters we have are our internal biases, the personal viewpoints that are based on those experiences, values, etc. below our waterline. Throughout each one of those six steps, our nervous system is constantly ducking beneath the wave. And depending on how well you do that, it affects the message sent and received, positively or negatively. Business today is a global venture with people in the environment that come from diverse backgrounds and language, as this whole conference of TFT has shown. Each culture has its own sound. When we experience barriers and cultural differences while interacting with a customer, teammate or manager whose language or dictionary is different from our own, both of you will probably misunderstand each other, the, the request, the issue, instructions and so on. This is miscommunication and that just leads to frustration, lower customer satisfaction and unintended insults. As a result, you increase your risk of losing that sale, the customer account, but most of all ruining a good relationship. So in order to communicate most effectively, be respectful and open to learning and consciously aware of your own biases and filters. Now, most miscommunication occurs because of how we filter information. So how can we do that more effectively? Well, improve your efficiency. Be more aware of how our brains compose and send messages and how we receive and digest the messages from others. Be aware of your personal biases affecting the way you formulate the message or interpret one. Make a conscious choice to minimise the impact of your biases. Understand the other components of successful communication, like being sensitive to other cultures and using the appropriate vocal elements and practising your active listening skills. You can assist the whole process of unication by matching your communication style with that of the other person. Start by understanding their level of proficiency. Match their vocal elements, but when it's appropriate, remember the sound waves crashing against each other. And match their vocabulary. There's always common ground between the dictionaries. And use the same level of technical terminology. Your message takes your listener on a journey from one knowing to another. The question then becomes, do you or they be able to go beyond understanding and be wise about the next action or reaction that you're going to have? The ocean is big, but you're not the only one that rides the wave. And the whole process we've just discussed can happen in nanoseconds or over great time and distance. So it's important to maintain conscious awareness of what you're thinking and feeling 
as that is what you're unconsciously at times telling people through your body language and tone of voice. Remember, ask yourself, will this interaction benefit those concerned? What is it you want them to understand and or do? And turn that around to yourself when someone's interacting with you. There are wave riders with a depth of skill to them we'd like to emulate. There are inspirations that we can tuck away beneath our waterline. But don't leave them there. Bring them out. Practice with them. They all represent some human facet to explore. If nothing else, appreciate and have fun with the colourful world of communication waves and make it a great conversation. For me personally, I'd love to be able to continue our conversation further past today. And April already mentioned this this morning, that she and I will be co-facilitating a knowledge centred support workshop at KM Australia in July. So the details are there. Also too, HAA are partnering with ITSMF this year for Lead It and running a series of workshops and talks dedicated to the support services stream. And you'll find that this whole human communication process is part of each and every one of those things. Remember, you can always connect with myself and HAA if you have any questions about this or any other ITSM topic. I want to thank you very much for listening to the presentation and I'm just going to switch back to Kirsty now. Uh, so just give me one moment here. Okay, Kirsty, have I got you back? I have no sound from you. Where's your oh, voice? Yes. Have you got the oh. sound? Oh, yes. <laughs> great. That was that was great. I mean, you know, you know my passion for communication, so so that rang lots of bells for me. And and seeing those diagrams of voice boxes took me back um, more years than I care to remember when I was doing my uh, speech and drama licentiate yeah. study and. Uh, learning all, all about the mechanics of, of voice production and intercostal diaphragmatic breathing and all those lovely uh, lovely things. Yeah, it was lovely big scientific words, all of that, wasn't it? Intercostal yeah. diaphragmatic oh, breathing. It was lovely. <laughs> Good. Now. Mm, so. so. So what, you mean, you, what can you suggest to people who really, who mean Got to say, you know, in IT, we do not have a reputation as being good communicators, do we? No, not really at all. Um, so in me, fact, interesting what April was saying this morning in her talk that, um, you know, yes, our frontline needs the knowledge, etc. But I also believe they have to combine that skill set with their ability to transfer that knowledge, and uh, I think that the service desk arena does that better than further back in the funnel uh, of IT. Uh, but, you know, there's lots of things that people can do, whether it's, uh, I know that on a lot of the global certification courses that we run, communication is a really important section and it has a whole unit dedicated just to this thing. Um, People can, whether they go to Toastmasters like yourself and yeah. have lots of fun there, uh, whether it's you do speech or drama, uh, yeah. singing, uh, any of those are great skill sets. Yeah. And in fact, one of my greatest resources, and I would recommend anyone to watch them, is to watch the Inside the Actors Studio. Right. I don't, yeah, I don't know if you've ever heard of the show. You know, I have, but, I have, yeah. It, it's fabulous. I love hearing about the craft of how all these actors uh, do the different things that they do, especially when they have to learn different accents for movies and things like that. And mm. there's lots of fantastic techniques. And because inside the actor's studio, although they're interviewing all sorts of uh, actors around the world, it's actually the audience are the people learning that craft of communicating. Uh, visually and, and vocally. And it
fabulous that they are so uh, straight up about their technique. And I, just like anything else, I mean, we can learn to hang boxes together and make talk, but we haven't quite learned how to stand face to face with women sometimes and do the same thing and interact that way. But, but it does drive everything else. Uh, you know, the way we write our outage messages, the way we document things in a, a log uh, about an incident, the diagnostic scripts, the emails we write. Um, if we were to transfer the step three, instead of coming out of the mouth when we're writing, it comes out of your fingertips. Uh -huh. So what you're thinking yeah. will come out. <laughs> I mean, I mean, how often have you heard it, you know, you, you're on a service desk and, and something needs to be communicated to a customer that, say, a technician is working on and you hear them, well, you know, don't let them speak to the customer, find out what it is and you tell them because <laughs> they're, just, they're just no good at speaking with the customers. I mean, perhaps we, you know, we shouldn't actually be letting that happen. We should be training those second and third level support staff to to know how to speak to the customer rather than than just not letting them ever get close to the customers. Absolutely. I mean, you, you tell somebody often enough that they're not good at something, that's exactly what they'll do. Yeah. And I mean, I think everybody's got the ability to communicate. Well, I think everybody, I can think of a couple, couple of exceptions within my own family. Who probably <laughs> Where remember, they're not difficult, they're just different. <laughs> yeah. My, uh, I have developed a brother and, and uh, yeah, I would never get him to speak to a customer either. I'd love, actually, I must try teaching him one day. Um, but I challenge everyone that's listening to this or listens to this to to think about when they're in the shower, how many of them actually sing? Because <laughs> if you can sing in the shower, you can do the human communication process. It just well, means you've got to take it out of the shower and put it out there. No, that's right. No, Well, this has uh, been enlightening i'm just going to have a wee look at the twitter stream simone and see what see if we have anything there for you yeah just mark kawasaki saying how wonderful it was that you made your content so current with that um gf 24 2045 slide i tell you what i was fascinated by what yeah. was going on there yeah. and yeah. inroads that science technology neurology uh and everything is making um we're, we're so caught up in in the technology side of uh using it as a mechanism to communicate but from what i was seeing from all the tweets and things especially via mr dancy yeah. uh that people, they were really exploring and understanding the human side of yeah. connecting through yeah. the technology. Yeah, it wasn't. A, it wasn't. A, it wasn't technology based. It was more more human human focused. You know, and uh, integrating with that technology yeah. to to enhance the human side of things rather than replace it. Which was exactly. Like, exactly. Yeah, I found that really really exciting. So no communi communication is. Uh, I mean, as as a as a race, we can't function without communication. And no, that's that. true. And I really want people to focus on unication. I mean, that that's yes. a whole thing is about uniting all those elements. Yes, right. Well, thank you, Simone, for your uh, enlightening talk. It was fun. Really enjoyed it. Thank you very very much. And thank you, everyone that voted to have the topic on because it was just so much fun. Really terrific to be able to present it. Wonderful. We'll let you go back to your uh, island life in the middle of Sydney Harbour. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, Kirsty. Okay. See you later. Bye-bye.